Okay, uh, hi. Hi! <laughs> nice to see you all here. I'm going to try to start on time because I'm always late. <laughs> and I think it's quite uh, ironic that I have the last uh, session of this DrupalCon because I'm always last minute. Uh, I'm going to give a little bit of insight to my life and how I tend to manage my work. And uh, if you have any questions, we can go over that afterwards. I'm going to talk a little bit about myself and the challenge of being me and the battle tricks and then we'll go over the key takeaways of, of this uh, talk. So I am born and raised in Iceland and currently I live in Barcelona. Um, I have a master degree in international management and the business degree as a BS, uh, BSc in marketing and management as well. Uh, my background comes from media in Iceland, in retail, where I lived in London for six years and had shops there, and then in marketing as well. And I'm currently working as a marketing director of One X Internet. And yeah, I think it's pretty much covers this. This is uh, me uh, and my three kids. Uh, we are all dwarfs, basically. <laughs> so here we are all tiptoeing, like trying to see who is uh, the shortest. <laughs> and currently that's me. <laughs> that's the situation we have now. And yeah, no, yeah. So the challenge, sorry. The challenge, um, <laughs> is it funny or is it frustrating? Um, I have often asked myself this and I was often very hurt. Oh, Jesus, you're, so, you're such a weirdo. You're a weirdo. Or you are like, oh my God, here she go again. And I'm like, yep, that's me. And then at some point I realized it's, it's not actually funny. It's just hard sometimes to be who I am because of the condition. And I actually realized four years ago when I divorced my partner and I became a single mom of three kids and managing my life and everything and that and no one was there to grab me, that then it became really challenging when there was no one to let me in, when I locked myself out. There was no one to drive to the airport when I forgot the passport. There was no one there to come and help me when I lost the car somewhere. And, you know, these daily battles. Um, is it destruction or is it ADHD? That's the thing. I'm sure you all like have experienced being like looking for, looking for your keys or you can't find your wallet or something like this. And it's frustrating. But then when it comes to these situations, uh, for example, me, when I was 20, I reversed out of a garage and I had both the doors open of the car. And I actually reversed out with the doors open. I was at work and luckily my boss was my dad. We were working in a football stadium and he was just stared at me like, what are you doing? Why didn't you close the door on the car? And I was like, well, he told me to reverse. I just reversed. I wasn't checking the doors. And that's a true story. Uh, I also took my dog for a walk the other day. I walked out of my house in Barcelona, was down the street, and realized I forgot the dog. <laughs> <laughs> I, ha I only had the dog lead, and I was like walking like this, really happy with myself, and then I realized I didn't have the dog. And the feeling is similar to like when you fall, and you, <laughs> you stand up, and you're like, I'm fine, and no one saw this. But I was like grabbing up the lead. It wasn't even like a lead that goes, pulls when the dog moves. It was just a long lead that I should have maybe noticed. <laughs> and the, the expression on my dog's face when I came back in with the lead says it all. She was just sitting there like, so I took her out. But is so with this, I just wanted to like, like, tell you a little bit like the difference of being like distracted or having an ATSD. And it's the Sompi syndrome that I once heard in a 
in a talk, and I, re I really related to this because most of the time I feel like a zombie. I'm constantly like, <laughs> like waking me up. <laughs> and it's actually a phase that we all go through, but the circle is usually around two hours for normal people. Two hours and you have to stand up, you get a tea or something, but often with people with ADHD, it's two minutes. So you can imagine where the, where the mind always drifting into like a mode of daydreaming and being like relaxed, it's, it's quite hard. The two minute cycle is not much you can do at work, you know, when you're always like daydreaming. Um, living alone uh, is sometimes tricky because we need the system to wake up and that's why people with ADHD are often loud, they're often like I listen to really loud music and I don't think, it, think it's loud, but then people come in and like, what, what's happening here? And I'm like, yeah, I'm just listening to music. It's like, yeah, it's really loud. Okay, so living alone can be bad because you really need someone to distract you and wake you up, but it can also be a really massive choice for people with ADHD because they need to the freedom. Like they need to be alone and distract because it's so tiring to be like this. So this is Molly, the dog that I left. And she's actually my closest workmate because she's always with me and she actually helps me a lot because she drags me out every day. So how do we turn our system on during the work? Uh, loud music, like I said. We eat chewy stuff. We're scribbling. We're not like in meetings, I can probably often be seen like this. And it's not because I'm not listening, it's because I'm scribbling to keep my attention going. We move, lots of people argue, and even a lot of people go to doctors and say, you have to help me because I keep thinking like I really want to kill someone. Or have this like thought of them doing a really bad thing just to keep the system going. It's not because they want to be murderous, but it's just like this really gets me up. Uh, so people with ADHD are in more risk to develop uh, post-traumatic stress disorder because we totally ignore our symptoms. We just keep going and we want to have fun and we never want the party to end. And we have a really, really strong and fast mind and pauses can be uncomfortable. And that's, that's why like people with ADHD just sometimes come across a bit odd, let's say. Uh, I just want to have fun. And it's so ironic, I have actually a tattoo that says, it's not forbidden to have fun. And then I have uh, the one next party tattoo next to it. <laughs> so it's, <laughs> it's a little bit true cliche. The battle tricks. So the first thing first is to take care of your mental and physical health. And I say, you can't do anything if, you, if, you, if this, this uh, part of your life is not in, in order. I would always tell you to sleep, to focus on your sleep, because sleep deprived person is not gonna do anything in their life or work life or anywhere. Uh, a lot of people with ADHD have a really late um, sleeping circle, so they tend to fall asleep between, between four and five in the morning and then they don't really function at work. So I say sleep, and then we can do the rest. I encourage people to enjoy the nature, to be out, to be with the people in your life, to move, to eat healthy, and try to meditate. These are all like very, very simple suggestions that every one of you have possibly heard many, many times. And it's said again and again because they work. And do what makes you happy again and again, and then we can start focusing on what to do at work. Um, I was actually <laughs> telling my friend today that I could never listen to audiobooks or anything before I started meditating because everything irritated me. The reading was too slow, couldn't remember any names of the books, and I, I just basically didn't get this why people how people could just listen to audiobooks, like. I started meditating and all of a sudden I was really able to focus and listen. So that's just one, one example. Um, 
I'm also not going to come here with any like amazing uh, advices on how you will improve everything in your life regarding your work, but I want to share what I do. So before I leave them my workday, I always try to plan ahead the day I see next coming up, because if I start chaotic, it will be chaotic, that's for sure. I do this very, very simple square on my desk and I always have to have everything written. It cannot be in my calendar because I don't function like that. I write down very important things, important things, can wait and to do, but not too important. And with this, I have it visual and then I feel better, I'm calmer. I check the prior task for, today, for the day, I check my meeting schedule to see when it's best for me to focus on tasks that take longer time, and I always tend to finish issues where I know it takes me less than 20 minutes, and especially if I know that people are waiting for me, which happens a lot. I have an mar amazing marketing team with me at One X, and they wait, often patiently, sometimes not so busily. <laughs> So this is what I prioritize, to not keep anyone waiting and no one out of work. So that will obviously always be my focus. Uh, I make lists, this is a list for one day I did, and I take them off, and I know we're in a technical conference, and you guys will probably all have this in Google Tasks, in your issues, and I do that as well. But having it like this, it really helps me because I feel like I want to take off, I feel I've worked it, I feel like oh, I've achieved something uh, and I can um, see that I'm actually doing the things I need to do. And then next morning or the like the evening, I will have different lists updated and I go through many, many books on, for, of the One X uh, notepads. Uh, I cannot recommend anything more than put your phone on silent because people with ADSD respond to everything. I hear a tick, I hear the, the neighbor's washing machine go off, I hear, I've worked at home for 16 years, by the way. I hear everything was going on in the building, the elevator is going, and I'm like, I just, everything distracts me. So the phone <laughs> being like we know, constantly going on, I've had it on do not disturb the whole conference, I have not missed out on anything. So put the phone on disturb or have it charging somewhere else. Mute Slack during focus hours. Uh, I often say to my team, we are not saving lives, this can wait. And if we cannot focus on anything, anything that we're doing, nothing's gonna happen. Um, stand up when you can feel, when you can feel you're not productive. And I'm obviously really lucky, I have an understanding uh, bosses, I have a team that understands how I am and when I feel that I'm like zoning out, listening to the elevator and everything, like I told you, I just stand up and, and take a break. I go out with my dog, I block uh, 20 minutes every lunch, I go out, fresh air, sometimes I have a coffee, and then I come back. So this is my desk, how I want to have it. This is um, uh, how I want to start my day. There's a list there on the table with what I need to do, and then this is, <laughs> my desk one morning after I was looking for a bill in the evening before and I left it like this and you can imagine sitting down to this having to start the day having slack uh, pinging you daily meeting starting and this is what you're dealing with it just can't be good no matter how much coffee I'm gonna have this is not gonna be good uh, communicate effectively so this is a really tricky balance when you work remotely. Be available, but not always. I really want to be available for everyone that needs me at all times, but then I'm not gonna do anything else. So that's why I have Slack muted and not visible on my screen when I know I need to write a blog post or something else. Have one-to-one -one meetings with my team. I think they're really, really valuable because you get totally different stories, you get a different perspective of the people's life, what they're dealing with, how they are like doing with work and task, and I think they're super important. Have dailies in bigger uh, projects, 
not with everyone, just people involved, and have weekly, so monthly, and status meetings with your team so that everyone are rowing in the same direction. I always say communicating is key to a good life, and I love to communicate. And I think like when people are stressed, we all have shitty times. If we know, we can all do better together. If I don't know that you're going through a rough time and you can't perform at work, there's no way for me to help. So I think we're, we are pretty good at this in the marketing team of One X. We speak, we are helping each other on all levels. So I think this is really, really important. So the key takeaways, I've no idea what time it is. I'm on time. No. Oof. <laughs> ADHD is a superpower. I always say this, you have to have a person with ADHD in your life, otherwise so boring, <laughs> you know. Uh, with all powers come responsibility, so I think we all have to be responsible for how we are feeling and performing and how we are doing things, and we need to constantly go over this. We need to constantly uh, estimate or like look at how did this day go, how did this meeting go, how did this conference go, did we do okay? And then I think, how, did, how are my kids uh, doing? Like, okay, I maybe need to get some dinners, uh, you know, all this. Balance is a practice, and one bad, bad day will not determine the whole week or month, or, or bad, one bad event will not determine the next event. So, I just encourage people to obviously uh, experiment with what works for you. This is just something that works for me. It's very, very uh, basic. There's no new science here. And my biggest, maybe, um, what do you call it, like, advice would be to avoid staying on auto autopilot, to always check, like, how it's going, how are you feeling at work, are you doing enough, are you doing too much, do you need help, communicate. And it's all good, we got this. <laughs> I think that's just my takeaways for this. So if you have any questions or anything, then I'm up for that. But otherwise, I just want to thank you for coming. <laughs>